estimating the number of photons in a room. We can estimate the number of photons in a room by using the following reasoning. The intensity of the sun's rays at the Earth's surface is roughly it equals 1000 watts per meter square, i.e. equals 1000 watts per meter square. A typical room is illuminated by indirect light or by light bulbs so that its light intensity is some fraction of that value. Part A. Estimate the intensity of the light that enters your room. So, according to this website here, we can estimate the standard lighting level in a room of about 300 lux. Uh, this corresponds to 300 times uh, 0 0.00 seven nine watts per meter square so this gives us 2.4 watts per meter square intensity okay now let's say that it's a bright day so if it is a bright day not the typical uh, intensity is not the standard lighting level in a room, uh, we can estimate the intensity in the room to be a fraction of the sunlight intensity, let's say uh, 0 0.01 times 1000. So this gives us 10 watts per meter square. Okay. So this is our estimate of the intensity of the light that enters our room. Part B. Model the light as entering uniformly at the ceiling and exiting uniformly at the floor. Estimate the area of the floor and ceiling and the height of your room. <clears throat> so let's say that we have a 50 meter uh, square room, like a living room, for example. So we can say estimated length, capital L, is roughly 5 meters, let's say, typically. And width approximately 10 meters so that we have an area A, which is length times the width, is 50 meters square. So that's a typical room, a living room, for example. And the height, the ceiling height, so provided that we have uh, people who are more than two meters tall, a typical height estimate could be, for example, three meters. Okay, so uh, in part B, we estimated the area of the floor uh, and, the, and the ceiling and the height of the room. Part C, estimate how long it takes light to travel from the ceiling to the floor of your room by dividing H by the speed of light. Okay, so the light travels a distance from the ceiling to the floor, which is the height of the room, uh, with the speed of light C. So the time it takes is 3 meters divided by 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second. So this gives us roughly 10 nanoseconds for the time it takes for the light to travel from the ceiling to the floor. Part D. Estimate the total power of the light that enters your room, P, by multiplying your estimated intensity 
by the area of your ceiling area. Okay, so the intensity of the light that enters the room is 10 watts per meter squared. That's our estimate. So the power is intensity multiplied by the area. So that means the power is 10 times 50 meters squared, which means the power uh, is 500 watts. Let's move on to part E. Estimate the total light energy in your room by multiplying the power, P, by the length of the time it takes light to travel from the ceiling to the floor. <clears throat> power is energy per unit time, so uh, light enters uniformly from the ceiling, travels to the floor, so P times delta T the energy in the room is 500 watts times 10 nanoseconds, 10 times 10 to minus 9, which gives us an energy of 5 microjoules. And let's move on to part F. An average wavelength for light is in the middle of the visible spectrum at roughly 500 nanometers. What's the energy of a 500 nanometer photon? Well, energy of a photon, E photon, is equal to 1243 electron volts divided by the wavelength in nanometers, as we have shown in the previous problem or it's actually Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by lambda, but when we plug in the numbers, this is what we obtained. So we can find the energy of the photon for a wavelength of 500 nanometers to be 1,243 divided by 500. This gives us 2.486 electron volts, if I multiply this with the electron charge, 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulombs, I obtain 3.98 times 10 to minus 19 joules. That's the energy of the 500 nanometer photon. And finally, we can calculate the total number of photons in your room, capital N. This is the ratio of the energy E room to the energy per photon. What is your estimate for M? Okay. Capital N is the total energy, total light energy in the room, divided by the energy per photon. And this gives us capital N is equal to, since we have found 5 microjoules energy, 5 times 10 to minus 6, and we divide it by the energy of one photon, 3.98 times 10 to minus 19, we obtain the number of photons, 1.26 times 10 to 13 photons in the row. Okay, so let's go through this argument here again. We estimate the standard lighting level in a room about 300 lux, which corresponds to 2.4 watts per meter square. But instead of a standard lighting, we can say it's a bright day. And let's say uh, we have 10 watts per meter square, which is 1% of the uh, light intensity that hits the Earth's surface coming from the sun. We can estimate the height of a room as 3 meters and area 50 meters square for a standard living room, let's say. The time it takes for the uniform light to travel from the ceiling to the floor is the height distance it travels divided by the speed of light, that's 10 nanoseconds. Since the intensity, that's power per area, is 10 watts per meter square multiplied by area, that's 500 watts power, uh, in, in the room, and power multiplied by delta t, 
the time it takes for the light to travel from the ceiling to the floor, we have total uh, light energy 5 microjoules. Energy of a 500 nanometer photon is 1243 electron volts divided by lambda in nanometers. And the number that we get, we need to multiply by 1.610 to minus 19 coulombs, the electron charge. This gives us the energy of a photon in joules. And the total energy in the room, 5 microjoules, divided by the energy of a single photon, gives us the number of photons, 1.26 times 10 to 13 photons.